Um, today we are going to talk about the network layer control plane and this is chapter 5 and um, so what we are going to talk about is routing algorithms. How do we calculate the route from any point in the world to any point in the other point in the world? So first, we talk about two algorithms. They are called um, Dijkstra and Bellman Ford, and they use technology called link state and distance vector. Then we talk about um, two protocols that use them, OSP, uh, OSPF and BZP. Then we talk a little bit more about SDN. We talked about SDN last time, but we'll talk a little bit more. And then we talk about ICMP and SNMP, which are actually management protocol, but have been thrown into this chapter by the author because he couldn't find place for them. Previously, in the previous editions, it used to be a separate chapter. So anyway, following the author, we'll just follow everything in chapter five. And um, so first thing is network layer. So network layer two does two things, forwarding and routing. Um, the forwarding part we already talked about that you, if you have a table, you just look it up, do the maximum prefix match, and, um, and then you send it off the packets. But how do you make that table is what we are going to talk about today. So there is some graph theoretic stuff here in this chapter, okay? So listen carefully, and if something is not clear, please raise your hand as usual, and until it becomes clear to you. Another thought I had was uh, over the weekend that I should ask you to read this beforehand, which I never got to do that. So, so I'm, I'm not going to give a quiz or anything right now. But um, next time I probably will do that is that I might ask you to read this stuff beforehand because some of this is too complicated to understand in just one round. It, you know, it needs uh, your reading and then my explaining and then your reading again. So graph abstraction, what is distance vector versus link state? What is Dijkstra's algorithms? What is Bellman Ford algorithm? So first of all, how do you pronounce it? Is it routing? Are routing. All right. Now, routing is not what we are doing in networking. Routing is what the football game people do, and routing is actually similar to what we do um, when people, carpenters, or anybody who has a carpentry um, hobby, might do it to bevel the edge on a table. So that is what we are doing: routing. And um, so with that, um, let's move to two spellings of routing, R-O-U-T-E-I-N-G, R-R-U-T-I-N-G, routing. Now, this is what it is, is that British people will spell it with an E in there, Americans don't. And that's why the British spellings are always longer because they put these extra characters for nothing and therefore their dictionary is much thicker than our dictionary okay so just remember to spell it correctly routing r o u t i n g and here is the thing though most of the rest of the world including iso which is the standards organization cciitt which is the telecommunications in, in the standards organizations they all um, um, they use um, english spelling and British spelling, and therefore they might be spelling it wrong. All right, with that entertainment, let's move on to solid stuff. Now, first question is, can you see the whole graph on the chart? Because in my case, it is blocked by the picture of the class, your video, but can you see on your side the whole graph? Okay, good. All right. So, the, this is how we find the route. To find the route, we need to have a graph of the whole network. And the graph consists of two things. It has a set of nodes, which we call them routers, 
and a set of links which are edges in the graph and the links are generally donated by two nodes so for example u to v is a link v to x is a link u to x is a link and um, there is no link for example from u to y right and each link has a cast and so the number is written next to the edge that the cast for going from u to x by following this route is 1 but if you were to go by a v it will be 4 because you have to go to v first and then from v to x is to another 2 all right is that clear so you can find the cast of any route by adding the edges okay and um, the routing algorithm's uh, job is to find the least cast path to find a path which actually has the lowest cost. Now, in a simple graph like this, you can probably look at this and say, well, here's the simplest cost path. But the internet is not that small. Internet is, you know, million times bigger than this. And so how do you find a cost? And so you need an algorithm. And now another thing we have done here in this graph is there are no arrows. So the cost of going from U to V is two and going from V to U is also two. So they are bidirectional. Basically, there is no change in the cost when you go in this direction or that direction. Now, in many cases, the directions make a difference. And if you go in one direction, the highway is thicker, or bigger. On the other direction, the highway is not as big. And um, so, I mean, that happens sometimes, but not most of the time. And so, so in those cases, you have to have arrows. But we are not going to talk about arrows right now. All right. So, is this clear as to how we represent a network with a graph? Okay. All right, so we will have two classes of algorithms. One is called distance vector and another is called link state. Now, they are, they are very similar. Basically, in the distance vector, you find out your distance from everybody in the world. So right now in your class, we have, let's say, 35 people and you want to find out the shortest path to go from one place to the next, you will find out your distance from each of those other 34 people. And then you tell your neighbor that, okay, my cast from one is this, two is this, three is this, and 34 is this. So this will be a big vector. And you will tell it to only your neighbors, which might be one or two people. Okay, that is distance vector. There is another one called link state. In the link state, what you do is you don't measure the cost to the whole world. You just measure the cost to your neighbors. So there might be one or two neighbors and you find out how much is your cost to your neighbor. And then you tell that to the whole world. So you tell number two that my cost from one to two is this, one to three is this. And whoever your neighbor, neighbors are very small numbers. So you will have a very small vector, but you will have to tell it to the whole world. So 34 people you have to tell, you know, what is your cost. So, I mean, as you can see, either you send a big vector to a small number of people or you send a small vector to a big number of people. All right. So, the distance vector is what? Distance vector is one where you would send big vectors to, to what? That's the question. To a small number of people. And link state is one where you send small vectors to big number of people. Okay, and this you have to remember now because for the rest of your life, you know, basically people will left and right say, oh, I'm using distance vector or I'm using link state. And you have to know what that was, right? So the link state simply means that I just know my links. I have three links, so I just can know about those three. So that is my link state. Distance vector means that, you know, I know the distance to everybody in the world, and so I'm going to advertise that. And so distance vector was used in older algorithm called RIP. RIP is a protocol that we no longer use, but it might be in some routers, routing information protocol, or RIP. But link state is the one that is used today in most of the protocols, including OSPF that we will talk about. OSPF is open, you know, shortest path route forwarding. And so OSPF is a protocol that we use nowadays and that uses link state. Okay. So is that clear the difference between the two? Any question? 
All right. So I'm going to move on. So first is Dextra's algorithm. Dextra came up, and Dextra is the name of a professor actually. So he came up with this algorithm for um, uh, for the finding the shortest path, and we will use the same notation that we have used so far. Is is cost of going from i to j is c i j d k is the total cost to go from whatever node we are thinking about to k. So we might be at node s and we want to find out what is my cost to k. So we say d k. And then n prime is the set of nodes that have the least cost path known. So right now you know the world is too big and I don't know the cost to everybody, but I might know to five people out of thirty-five. So that is my set. N prime is the set of those five people whose cost I know. So we start with n prime equal to u, which is myself. Okay, and um, and then the cost for everybody else is you know whatever it is. If I know it, if I don't know it, then I don't know it. And I will show you that in the next slide. And we repeat this. And we keep adding some more nodes to n prime until the n prime becomes equal to the whole world. Okay, and so we'll see that in the next slide. So here is that graph again. U is the node, and we want to find out the cost from U to everybody. U is the node on the left. Yeah. Go ahead. Question. Right. So the question is, who we send this cost to? Is that what you are asking? Okay. So what I said was, and I don't remember what I said the last sentence, but what I said was that we start with knowing the cost to myself, which is n prime is equal to u, and slowly we will add one node at a time to that set, so that we know from one to two people. Cost going from one to, from me to two people, and then from me to three people, from me to four people, and from me to the whole world. Is that clear? Okay. All right. So me in this case is you, the node you on the left, and we need to know the path, shortest path from you to everything else. Now you is connected to, you can see how it is connected. It is connected to V, it is connected to X, and it is directly connected to W as well. So we generally do this in a table or form, table form, and the table is right here. And please listen carefully because the next homework is exactly making this table for yourself, and then you will ask on Piazza because then you didn't listen to it carefully when I said here. So please. So first we start with n prime equal to u, which means myself. Okay, and the costs are written in the columns. So d v, the cost to v is two. Why is it two? Because u to v link is two, and the path would be if I were to go to v, the path would be simply u to v, straight from u to v, direct flight. Then, if you want to go to W, the path, the cost is five, and the path is straight U to W. If you want to go to X, the cost is how much? Anybody? Can you read the graph? What is the cost from U to X? One, and the path is directly U to X. A path to y we don't know because u cannot u doesn't know yet how to get to y, and path to z we don't know so we write down infinity for the cost and the path is a dash which means null. Okay, so we don't know the path. Now what we do is once we have the whole row written down, then we take the short smallest number in that row. And we say this is this is fixed. Now we are not going to change this number. So in this case, the first row has the smallest number one. Okay, there is one, five, two, and infinity, and the smallest number is one. So it will say, "All right, my cost to x is fixed," and I wrote it in in red. And basically, and that is not going to change. So that is fixed. Everything else can change. So we put x into our set. 
okay so the next line starts with n prime being equal to u comma x okay because we are sure about the cost between u and x and but we don't know the rest of the world so from if we have u and x in this set where can we get well u was able to go to three nodes but x is also able to go to four nodes x can go to u v w and y right and so we can see now the path might change so let's say if you want to go to v our choices are go directly or go via x go via x it will cost how much 3 right 1 plus 2 is 3 so that is not a good path so we say u to v is still 2 u to w is now cheaper u to w i would rather go by x and have the cost will be 4 rather than going directly where the cost is 5 so we write down cost to w is 4 and the path is u x w okay now cost to x is now we are not going to consider any more because it is already fixed and known cost to y can we get to y yeah we can get to y by x and the cost is 2 Okay, so the path is u x y. Can we get to z? We don't. We can't because x cannot get to z and u cannot get to z. All right. So we wrote down this row. Now, what is the smallest number in this case? Two. Now it just it is not clear which two is the smallest, and so there are two twos. So we can take any one two is fine. Okay. so i am just going to take the two which is under y and put y in the set you could repeat this with the other two and take v as in the set and you will come up to the same conclusion the result will be same all right so now we put the two under y as 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 fixed and we put that so y we put in the set and now we are in line number 2 row number 2 as numbered here we numbered it from 0 1 and 2 so number 2 the set consists of u x and y and now where can we get from this set from u we already know where we can get from x we already know where we can get so now y is the only new information now y is connected to three nodes x w and z all right so we figure out of course you won't be able to do anything with x because x is already in this set and we already know the best path to it so the w and z so we see the path to w now if y is in this set then the path to w is u x y w cost is 3 and and the cost to z is u x y z is 4 and it, that is not the only path if you have u x y you could also go u x yeah u x y z that is the only path um and so so you write down the cost 4 and write down the path now the smallest number among 2 3 and 4 is basically the 2 that we had not done last time and so we bring v into the set once we bring v into the set now we have to consider what v is connected to v is connected to u w and x so we go back x is not an issue x is actually already in this set so we don't have to worry about it now we see about w so we see if there is a cost to w which is less so if we have v in this set the cost to w is 5 which is not really good so we stay at 4 okay nothing changes basically the 3 is the smallest number and so we bring w into the set okay and we bring w into the set so now the set consists of u x y v and w and um, now where can we get from w w has several links w connects to v x y u and z so can we get cheaper to z the answer is no the cost by going by w from u would be much higher so we leave it as 4 and that is the smallest number so you bring z into the set all right now since the whole world is in the set we stop okay 
and so that is the shortest path route to every node if you want to go from x sorry u to v the shortest path cast is 2 and you go by u dash v if you want to go to w the shortest path cast is 3 and you go u x y w if you want to go to x the path cast is 1 and you go u x for y so you just read those red numbers now look at this table many times today and see if you can do this yourself is there a step that is not clear to you because right after this the next slide is probably the homework slide and you have to do it yourself any questions raise your hand so microphone can come to you everybody is clear this is this clear how to do this all right if there are no questions nobody is raising the hand then i move to okay homework is coming one slide later so let me just move to this slide so basically when we compare many algorithms we compare their complexity in this case the complexity is is if you don't do much then it is order of n square and how do you get n square because for each iteration each iteration we have to do n times n plus 1 2 comparisons which is order of n squared each iteration you do basically n n let's say in the first iteration you did n comparison second iteration you did n minus 1 and then n minus 2 and the whole series you add it up the whole series adds up to n times n plus 1 by 2 and that is roughly an order of n squared for large n that plus 1 by 2 doesn't matter okay so we say the, comp the complexity is order of n square which is basically second order second degree and so people say well that is too much because if i have million nodes i will have to do million times million you know comparison but people have come up with better implementation of the same algorithm and those implementation can take order of n log n and so that is much less than n squared and so that is where we do second thing is sometimes you may oscillate so it shows the example in the bottom where you may say well this is the shortest path and then later on you say well no 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 that other one is the shortest path and then you come back to the first one because that is the shortest path so so basically the and this happens particularly if your cost changes because of the traffic so think about this google maps when you use on the highway it tells you the path based upon the current traffic it tells you the highway 270 is congested so don't take 270 take 170 instead now if it tells that to everybody everybody will go to 170 and now 270 will not be congested and then it will start telling everybody please go on 270 because 170 is congested so routing can itself change the cost in this case and that's what happens if you have that kind of thing then oscillations will happen and so if the support cost if the link cost changes with the traffic then you know you will oscillate a lot okay so those are two points on this slide first point is that the complexity is actually in, in if you didn't if you just implemented the way we told you it will be order of n squared but if you write better programs and you know keep better data and all that you can do it n log n okay and um, the second thing is um, and the oscillations are possible so generally you should not be you should not be including the traffic itself in the cast although it is easier said than done because on the highway you really want to use traffic to discuss to 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 compute your cost because more traffic means more delay so anyway so that, those are the two points all right any questions not then there is a homework 
Now this homework, I mean, basically is very similar to the problem I gave you before, the example that we took. And your cast is to prepare, your, your, your job is to prepare the table exactly as I showed you before from one. Okay, exactly the same note. Now, while you will do one in here in the homework, of course, in the exam, I will ask something very similar, but it may not be from one, it may be from two, three, four, or five. Right? So, you should be able to do it from any node to any node. Just in the table would be very different if you were to start from two or if you were to start from three. Alright? But you should know how to start from any node, write the first row, write the second row, write the third row, and that requires practice. Practice means that you cannot just do one homework and say, okay, all right, I now, now know it and I will be able to do it in the exam. You really need to do more than the homework, which means that you go ahead and I gave you the homework from one, you try it out from two, three, four, five, whatever it is, and the more practice you do, the faster it will be in the exam. Okay, everybody can do the homework. All right, if that is so, then we move on to Bellman Ford. So this is another algorithm. And obviously the previous one was um, link state and this is distance vector. In this case, you have the cast similar way, but what we do is we start with hops. So I we first find out the cast to everybody in one half who is within one half of me. Then we find out the cast to everybody who is in two halves of me and so on and so forth. We increase the area all the way until we cover the whole world. Okay. And um, so we will use the notation D sub U of N. Okay. Uh, all right. I think um, the echo is coming louder. So please, um, whatever the microphone is, uh, it has to be turned off and then turn on only when the questions are there. So um, D U N is the cast from U to N under H halves. So we initialize first my cast to everybody is infinity. If it is not me myself, the cast to myself is zero. And then we keep computing the cast and including you know, more people as shown in the next slide, which we'll do. But before I go to the more detailed case, we will take a very simple case here, a simpler case, and then we'll go to more complex case. Simpler case is just three nodes, X, Y, and Z. They are connected to each other. And um, the casts are given in the, on the right side. So they prepare a table. Node X prepares the table and it says the cast from X, Y, and Z to X, Y, and Z as known at this point is what? So X says, well, I don't know what is the Y's cast to and, and the Z cast is, but I know myself that my cast to X is zero Why? because this is me. And to Y it is two because I know the link and Z it is seven because I know that link. Okay. Similarly, Y prepares its own table and it says, well, I don't know what is X and Y, G's table looks like, but my in my case, to reach X, I need two, to reach myself, it is zero, and um, to reach Z, I need one. And Z prepares a table as well, and in this case, it says my cast to myself is zero, to Y it is one, and to X it is seven. So these are something that they already know, as you can see. Now what they do is they send their whole table to all their neighbors. Now the table is big, that's why it is called distance vector. They take the whole table and send it to all their neighbors. So X will send to Y and Z, Y will send to X and Z, and Z will send to X and Y. And so when, so this will, what will happen in the next, in the next round. X now has received the table from Y and Z. 
and it takes their part of the table and puts it in its table. So it puts the table that from y to go to x is 2, to y itself is 0, to z it is 1. From z, this 710 is there, right? And similarly, y's table also changes. Actually, all of these tables start looking very similar, except that the, their own table now has to change. So now, even though x was thinking that to go to z, it takes 7 in the previous round, but in this round, it has learned that the better way to go to z is via y, because y cast is 2 and to z it is 1, so total cast is 3. So if I need to go to z, I will not go direct, I will go through y. So it changes that number to 3. Okay. And, and please turn off those microphones, wireless microphones, um, because they do create an echo. So they have to be turned on only when you need to ask a question. All right. So, so this table changes. Similarly, everybody else's table changes a little bit. If the table doesn't change, you don't do anything, you are happy, you're done. Okay, there goes the microphone on the road. I don't know what is happening. Okay, all right. So, um, so the so the point is the access table has changed. So then I say access. Oh, hold on. I gave you the information in the last round. Something which has changed now. So X change, sends its table to Y and Z. Y's table has not changed, so it doesn't send to anybody. G's table has changed also. G was first thinking it is 710. Now it knows 310. Okay, why it is 3? Because to go to X, it, it doesn't go direct, it can go through Y. Okay, so it sends to everybody. So everybody's table changes again. Now this time everybody recalculates, nothing changes. Okay, so they're all done, they're all happy, and until something changes, nothing more will be done, right? And so that is that is the Bellman Force algorithm. Very simple rule. First rule is that you start with the known cost and put everything else to infinity. Then you, you exchange your complete table with the neighbors. Okay, big vectors to your neighbors and once you get those then you recalculate your table. If there are any change in your table then you send it to other people. Otherwise this is stop. So now we take a little bit more complicated example. And this is actually, I think, the same same example that we did with um, Bastra's algorithm. In this case, we want to go from u to every place. u is on the left. And the numbers inside the circles are now the cast from u. Okay. So as far as u is concerned, its view is that it knows the cast to itself. It doesn't know the cast to anybody else. They're all infinity. Now, it does know these edges, 1, 5, and 2. So, it sends them. And um, then, um, when it receives the table from its neighbors, V, W, and X, it knows that my cast to V is 2, my cast to W is 1, and my cast, sorry, my cast to W is 5, because that is direct cast, and my cast to X is 1. Right. So this is basically now, you know, it is it is going um, um, in one half cast. Basically, one half cast to V is two. One half cast to W is five. One half cast to X is one. Now it says, what if I were to go to these places and go from there to some other place? So the, it, when it gets the table from those one half people, one half friends, V, W, and X then it can do something. So V tells me, tells him that basically you can get to W by cast of 3, you can get to X by cast of 2, and it says no, they don't help at all. But it does, I mean basically because they are same. But X tells you that you can get to W with a cast of 3, 
and um, and other numbers so it's a yeah good i can reach w with a cost of 4 now in two halves and i can reach y with a cost of 2 in two halves okay and um, and then will it will continue i think it will take one more round before we will know that you can reach z at the cost of 10 actually the cost of 10 was previously because w would have told you that my cost to z is 5 and therefore your cost would be 10 so that is 10 is here and then when y comes in y is known then y will tell that no no you don't have to spend that much money you can get to z with 4 because my cost is 2 okay now this looks like complicated but if you do it in a tabular form it is same way same way as dijkstra's so we will do it in a tab tabular form we write the first row and the first row says the number of halves is zero who can i reach in zero halves and what is my cost to them so use cost to v is infinity because in zero half it cannot reach w is infinity x is infinity y is infinity z is infinity everything is infinity because it cannot reach any of them in zero halves I mean, if, if there is a column for you, yes, it can reach itself with a cost in a zero half. So then it says, okay, what can I do in one half? In one half, then you look up here, you would have gotten the table from these one half guys, and then you would have realized that your cost to V is two, and the path would be UV, cost to W is five, the cost would be W, and, and, and X is one, and everything else is infinity. In one half, you can only reach three nodes, W, V, and X. Now, if you are going to one more half after that, then you say, all right, where can I get from V in two halves? From V, you can get to W and X, and you calculate the cost. Um, and then from um, X, I can reach W and Y, and you calculate that cost, and so on and so forth. And from W, I can reach Z and Y, and X, and V. So all of those costs are considered. So now let's see, in one half, we can reach only these three. So next half, two halves, I can reach V. Now we calculated the cost for reaching V by two halves, and we find that there is no better way. Two is the best. For W, two halves is better because we can go via X and have the cost four as opposed to five. So we write down 4 in red because it is a new cost. It is changed from before. It is less than before. And, um, and this was one was already you know there and then we didn't do any better than that. And then y is still infinity but in the two halves it becomes 2 because we can go u x y. And 10 is better because we can go u w z. So these are the best costs so far 4, 2 and 10 right. Now we need to, be, so basically then three halves. So now whoever new came in and those are actually W, X and Z. Those are the three costs which changed. And so we have to go back to those three people and say, see if we can, by one half you can do anything better with other people. So first we go to W and see if we can do something better in three halves. And actually, um, nothing better can be done but if you ask why why will say that if you go through me the cost would be better so basically in three apps if you go by y the cost would be three so that is what you get here three by going u x y v and you ask why because y was in the red and similarly you know the cost to z becomes changed because again you go by y and you get the cost as four and now, um, basically, so there are only two numbers which have changed, 3 and 4. So we ask them, W and Z, is there any place I can get cheaper? And the answer is no, and so you stop right there. All right. So let me just go over one more time and listen carefully to this, because again, the next slide is a homework. Is that you start with all the costs being infinity, And then you ask one half people, you get them. And so they are all in red because those are new information. Then you ask them where can I get in two halves? 
and then change your table and then so there are three numbers which changed so then you ask those three people where can i get further from you and there are two numbers which changed then you ask those two people where else can i get through you and there nothing changes so you are done all right this is called the distance vector algorithm this is called actually bellman ford algorithm it uses the distance vector method and distance vector is more like a class of vector algorithms and so there are many algorithm many other algorithms that we will not talk about that were probably published that use distance vector and there were many algorithm that were published using link state and so we just give you one representative from each class and so these are individual algorithms but the class is either distance vector or link state and as i said now we don't use distance vector but this is more for historical reason and one of the problem with distance vector is counting to infinity problem and the counting to infinity problem is that the bad news travels very slowly and the issue is that when some link breaks everybody in the world should know right away that the link has broken there is no flight going from new york to los angeles or whatever and um, so but it turns out if you use link state then it will take quite some time before everybody will come to know that and so the world will be kind of not very happy that i came all the way to new york but i can't get to los angeles right so here the situation so what happens is this is a very simple network a to r1 router 1 to r2 and the tables are very simple r1 says you can get to r2 by a cost of 1 from me and r1 says you know a is basically a cost of 1 from me so r1 somehow tells both its neighbor a and r2 how to get to the other side and r2 tells the same thing and so on and so forth now r1 loses a now just think about it if somehow r1 loses a and so what this table says r1 table says that i can get to a um so actually uh, let us read this table little bit correctly what it says is this r2 says that i uh, okay so these are the tables on the r2 side the next column the first column is the table at r1 the table at r1 says that my cost to a is 1 okay and therefore r2 says my cost to a is 2 and it will go through r1 all right now now what will happen is at time 1.5 let's say sometime later r1 loses the connection and it right away says that my cost to a is infinity and infinity is written like a large number in this case the large number is 16 okay if we use just only four bit numbers we would say you know 16 is infinity so so r1 says my cost is 16 to a and then r2 says hold on your cost is 16 but mine is only 2 here is my table so r2 tells r1 that i can reach a at the cost of 2 it doesn't say how i will get there but if you send me a packet i can get to a in cost of 2 all right so r r1 changes its table and says okay i can now reach a at the cost of 3 via r2 now this is false but this is the situation right now now so since this cost has changed from 16 to 3 it advertises to all its neighbor it tells r2 that my cost to a is 3 and now r2 says okay all right and i was actually able to get to a cost 2 by r1 but now the cost is 3 so i will go at 4 so it says its table says 4 then it says now because this table has changed it tells the whole world including r1 that my cost is now 4 so it says 5 and then it says 6 and then it says 7 and then it says 
and then we'll count up to infinity. So it will take infinite iterations before both of them will realize that there is no way to get to A. Now look at this process little bit more carefully, see if it makes sense and um, please ask question if it does not make sense. It is quite normal not to make sense in the very first round around. So does it make sense why somebody says what? So, so is there not a TA which can bring the bring the microphone to the student? Why don't you bring the microphone to the student? Why is the student walking to you? Okay, I can hear you, but uh, are the two microphones, one is not working, is that what you're saying? Huh? Okay, so just check the battery, check the battery, it might be upside down, I mean, it might be in the wrong polarity, both microphones were working when I left them there. Okay, and um, so anyway, go ahead with the microphone that is working. Uh, okay, I can hear Joss. I don't know, I couldn't hear the student very well, but I could hear the Joss. Joss, what do you have in your hand? Do you have something? No? Is Joss in the room? You're typing. Okay. Share. Okay, all right. So you forgot to set the microphone as the input, video input. Okay, audio input. Anyway, so he wants to re-explain what it says, why it says, why it says 16 in the second column. Why it says 16 in the second column. Actually, the question might be why it says 16 in the first column, and then you know how it goes to 16 in the second column. I'm going to redo the whole slide all over again. Very first, when everything is working, the cost from R1 to A is one and the path is R1. Now you don't send how I'm going to get to A, but you tell R2 that you, if you need ever needs to reach A, you can get through me at the car and my cost is one. And R1, R2 adds its own cost to R1, which is one and says, okay, so my cost to A is two. And it tells that, I mean, so that is actually, it tells the same thing and now everybody's happy and so nothing changes after that. Everything is stable until the link between A and R1 cuts off. Okay. When this cuts off, then we put 16 here because now R1 knows that I can't reach to A because, you know, the link is gone, my is my neighbor and it's, it's, the road is broken or the flight is not going, taking off, whatever, right? So it puts 16. 16 is infinity. 16 is the representation of infinity. All right, and then it tells R2 that my cost to A is 16, but R2 says, oh, your cost is 16, but my cost is only two. And um, so you can send it to me. And so now it writes down that, okay, R2's cost is two, so my cost is three. So R1's cost now becomes suddenly three. Does that make sense? If that doesn't make sense, then we don't need to proceed further. But basically the idea is that each other, no, R2 thinks that his cost is two and therefore anybody in the world can get to A with cost of two from here. And so R1, it tells R1 and R1 now write down that the cost to A would be three if I ever went through R2. All right. So suddenly the table is totally messed up. Now it tells 
this one and it says oh my cast is 4 and then it says my cast is 5 and it says my cast is 6 7 8 9 10 11 15 16 so this keeps basically it's counting to infinity you have to count from 1 through 16 before both of them know the bad news the bad news is that you can't reach a from from anywhere is that clear now okay good so some sound is coming through some microphone i don't know which microphone it is coming through but that is good all right so i'm going to move and um, so we are going to summarize the two algorithms the two algorithms are that distance vector means you big send big vectors to the, your neighbors or link state where you send little state to the whole world okay dashtra is link state and bellman ford is distance vector but the distance vector suffer from counting to infinity so they are not used they were used at one point in a protocol called RIP, RIP, and um, now RIP used to stand for um, Routing Information Protocol. I think now it stands for Rest in Peace, and so it is dead. Okay, we don't use it anymore. Now, on the bottom of this slide, it says, "Please read Section 5.2 of the Test Book, and please." do the review question r3 to r6 now it would be interesting if somebody does those questions and ask some questions but nobody does those questions so nobody is asking those questions they just you know do the homework minimum and then you know because they do the minimum then they in the exam they can't do much because you know you have just done once so here's the homework for 5b homework 5b is exactly the same problem as before actually even simplified graph but this time you have to do it using Bellman Ford. And again from 1, but please do it from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or whatever else. The more you practice, the more you will be able to do. Okay. All right. So, routing protocols. Now we are going to go in this. So those are routing algorithms. Algorithms means the mathematics behind these things, right? Now we are going to talk about protocols. Protocols are the one that are used and um, basically, you know, the, the messages and things like that between the routers. So there are two protocols we will talk about. One is called OSPF and the another one is called BZP. And they use two terms which we are going to use. One is called autonomous systems and, and then the areas. So let's talk about autonomous systems and the areas. Autonomous systems is basically anything that is managed by one company or one ownership or one organization. So for example, AT&T is one autonomous system. Washu is another autonomous system. My home probably is, but I mean like nobody really cares. My big company is generally. You know, so the, actually my home is, is not really an autonomous system because it is covered by the Cox, whoever is my supplier. They advertise to the world all the routing. They say, if you ever want to reach um, these addresses which they manage, and one of my and one of those addresses is mine, my home, and they tell the world that, okay, if you ever want to reach um, this, this person in St. Louis, then you send the packets to me. Okay? So those are the autonomous systems. So autonomous systems are any set of any subset of the internet which basically is managed by one organization. And then what they do is inside the organization they manage the routing differently than the outside the organization. So there are two autonomous systems shown in this picture. And these arrows which are blue, they are interior information. So inside the network some information is being being exchanged between R2, R3, R3, R4 and R1. That is the interior protocol. And, and some information is also exchanged outside between R1 and R5 because R1 is actually a, an exterior router. It, it faces outward, outside the company. It connects to the outside the company. 
and R5 is exterior router as well. So, so there is an exterior protocol which is spoken between R1 and R5 and these protocols are different because inside the company we, we give a lot more information, outside the company we give very little information. Okay. Inside, for example, your own family might know a lot more about what is going on inside your home than you will tell your neighbors are outside, right? So the same way here, there are two protocols, a blue one, which is interior routing protocol and a red one, which is the exterior routing protocol and the exterior is BGP actually and interior is OSPF that we will talk about. There are many other protocols for interior and exterior, but we will just talk about one each. Okay, and inside the network there might be a smaller sub networks. So I have shown here sub networks, and um, and then um, the the routers are the main thing that we are talking about here. So the routing protocol there are two, and I already mentioned them: uh, interior routing protocol and exterior. Interiors were RIP, ISPF, IGRP, and the exterior routing protocols are EGP, BGP, IDRP. And um, so you can see that um, RIP we are not talking about. IGRP is a protocol that we will not talk about. We will only talk about OSPF. And these interior routing protocols are known as IRP or IGP, Interior Gateway Protocols. Okay, routers are known as gateways in IP world. So Interior Gateway Protocols, IGP. The exterior routing protocols can be called ERP or EGP, exterior gateway protocol. So there are many EGPs and one of them members of the class is EGP. So EGP is a protocol as well as a class. So that gets confusing sometimes when somebody says, oh, I'm using EGP. It's not really clear whether they are using a member of the class EGP or they are using EGP itself. EGP is a member of itself as well. So EGP is exterior routing protocol and BGP is actually routing protocol, IDRP is actually routing protocol, so this is just some misconfusion, okay? But whenever we talk about EGP, we make it clear that this is a class, EGP class or EGP protocol. All right? So OSPF. Now OSPF is Open Sartest Routing Protocol and um, it uses true matrix, not just half count. So when it computes the uh, cost, it really are numbers, it's not just one half. Some protocols will just have the number of halves, and I don't remember, maybe RIP was that one. So they were just counting the number of halves to keep life simple, but now you know people have cost because if you are using Wi-Fi, the rate is low and the cost is high, if you are using Ethernet, the rate is high, cost is low. So that is the kind of cost they use. And uses subnet masks. So then it can put the whole set of people into one group and say, okay, this whole subnet can be reached at this cost. Allows load balancing across equal cost paths. So you can have two paths to the same node, to the same destination, and it will allow you to send half of the traffic through one path and the other half through the other path. Yes, so it's not that if you have two paths to go to airport, for example, 170 and 270, it will send half traffic to 170, other half to 270. Supports type of service. Now, you can say, well, I really want the least cost, least delay path or least throughput path, or, um, not least, highest throughput path. So it will do that quality of service type of service. Allows external routes. So routes learned from other autonomous systems. So basically, OSPF, let me see, let me show you this. What I mean is that the OSPF, some nodes here, they want to get out of the company to some other nodes, they can learn using OSPF how to reach the other things outside. Okay, that's what it means. Allows external routes from other partners. Authenticates routes exchanges. So whenever the router says that I know this cost, they, they make sure that the signature is there, that they you know, correct that the, this is router. And quick convergence and it moves fast as opposed to that distance vector thing. Direct support for multicast and you can also use multicast when you want to send something to in a class of nodes, not just one node. 
you want to send to all bridges, all routers, all switches, all base stations, whatever, you can do that with this OSPF. And it uses link state routing. And that means that you send link state. Remember this, and we will use it very often. Link state means that you take the small state of your neighbors and send it to the whole world. Okay, that is link state. And so SPF uses that. All right, any question about any word in this slide? If at least one microphone is working, then you know maybe people can ask the question and then the microphone person can repeat it. Is any microphone working? Okay, so all right, next time, please be careful and set the audio to the external microphone, which was actually the HQ Square free. Okay. The outside, the going in is iTunes, uh, I, um, uh, I, Intel, which goes through the HDMI, but coming in, it has to be HQ square free. Okay, and we will test this um, before we start the class next time. All right, so computer microphone is working. So anyway, anybody can ask the question and the computer person will repeat it to me. Any questions on this slide? None. Then, um, okay. Quick convergence, okay. So you remember that uh, here, um, this one, Whenever there is a news, like say the link broke, it took 16 rounds before they, both of them found out that the link broke. That is the convergence time, is infinity in this case. In this algorithm, for example, in this example here, it just took five rounds and we are converges to the final solution. Now nothing is changed and found the answer in, in, in the number of, you know, in the, these many rounds. So quick convergence simply means that, you know, it doesn't take very long before we know the cost to the whole world. Okay. Does that answer the question? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Any other question? All right. If not, then we move to a little bit more detail on OSPF. So OSPF actually divides the whole network into areas because the companies can be big and therefore they divide into areas. So we call them OSPF areas. So as shown in this network, what we have is N areas, area one, area two, area N, and then there is a backbone network. And so there is a router which connects the area one to the backbone, and there is another router which connects area two to the backbone, and we call it ABR, area border router. So each, each area is connected to the backbone by a router, and that is called area border router, ABR. So there is an ABR for area 1, there is an ABR for area 2, there is an ABR for area N. Okay? So there are many ABRs. And um, so this is only for large networks. If you didn't have large network, you could just have one area, for example, um, you know, in a small department or a small company or a small home. You will, I mean, I actually in the home, you generally don't use OSPF at all anyway, because everything is, there is only one router in my home. There are not five routers. If you did have five routers in your home, then you will need to run OSPF. And, um, and probably they do, because nowadays most of the routers come in a mesh topology. For example, my home, actually, I do have a mesh topology. And, um, and the mesh actually is managed by the router provider so i have three routers from the same company or four actually four or five and they're distributed all over the home but they're probably using ospf but i'm not involved in it because the company manages the mesh if i were to ever mix a router from one company to another company then i'm i'll be in trouble of managing the ospf but right now i don't but i'm just saying that most of the companies people have to do um, if you manage a network you become a network manager then you will have to worry about ospf so anyway so there is an area and then backbone, and then there are ABRs like that, okay? 
APRs connect an area to the backbone area and ABRs contain OSPF data for two areas. So now, now ABR is a router. Now it is actually connecting to two areas, area one and to the backbone. Okay, the backbone itself is an area. So it knows about how to get things done in backbone and it knows how to get things done in area one. This one knows how to do an area two and backbone, and this one knows area n and backbone. So ABRs run OSP algorithm for these two areas. If there is only one area in the AS, then there is no backbone and there are no ABRs. So it is quite possible that your network has only one area and then you are done. You don't need a backbone. Okay. All right. Now that's all we are going to say. Believe it or not, for OSPF. Now there is a lot more in the book. And I would suggest that you read that in the book. If you have any question, bring it to the next class. And um, what we have done here is covered the key topics that you know are important, and um, and the rest actually has to be done, learned by reading it. Okay. So at this point, what you can do is you can ask any question what is on this slide. But in the next class, you can ask questions about what is not in this slide and we can try to answer it. Okay, now I'm going to move to the next protocol. If there are no questions about this, then we can move to the next protocol called BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. So Border Gateway Protocol is the protocol that is run between the autonomous systems. So big companies like AT&T and WashU, they exchange routes. And so that is the inter-autonomous system protocol. Okay, described in RFC 1267. What is an RFC? Anybody remembers or knows? So that's a good question. Let me ask again. Does anybody know what is an RFC? Yeah, request for comment. Thank you. So, who does that RFC? What is the organization? Where do you have to go to get an RFC? All right. So, people, you know, can kind of remember only yesterday's lecture. They don't remember. But I did discuss this in the past. IETF is where the whole internet protocols are developed. IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force. IETF.org is where you go to find out all these RFCs and what else is going on right now. And so they write the protocols into request for comments and these can be found in IETF.org. So RFC 1267, if you just go to IETF.org, you will find it there. But anyway, it has been used since 1989 and um, now it is very widely used. It runs on TCP and, um, and it runs on TCP because it needs reliable transmission and it needs segmentation. Segmentation means the BGP messages are very, very big, so it really needs fragmentation. You know, they have to be broken down into pieces and therefore, whenever two people speak BGP, they use TCP. It advertises all transits ASS on the path to a destination. So let's say you want to go from here to Germany. Then you will say that if you ever want to go to Germany, I mean, like, you know, you have the United States. Let's say just I'm mean, just taking an example. And the United States is not in, is not in, is not really an autonomous system. But uh, it will say, well, if you want to go to Germany, you know, you can go through me via you know New York and by San Francisco and by you know Chicago. This kind of messages can be sent to the other neighbors and the other neighbors can send it to other neighbors. So basically at this point, we're not really telling them how to get there, but we just tell them that if you ever wanted to go there, you come to US first and then you, you know, from here, you take from New York, you go to there and the cost is so much. So this lists all transit ASS on the path, all transit ASS on the path. So it will say not only that you can get to Germany, but you can get to Germany by going from here to Canada, from Canada to France and France to Germany. So everything on the path will be listed at the AS level. So it's like this, AT&T can say that, okay, maybe my, my carrier, Cox, 
can say to everybody that okay if you ever want to go to st louis um, you know basically you can come through me but i mean you know and, and well st louis is right there but you know they they could they could tell somebody else uh, somebody else could say well if you ever want to go to st louis then you go through you know at&t from at&t to t mobile from t mobile to cox and cox to st louis something like that right so this is the whole list of ass is sent and router may receive multiple paths to a destination so just like and there are many ways to go to many places you will receive many of these and then you will choose the best path now there are two parts of bgp i bgp is interior bgp like this so inside an as the messages are sent and that is called i bgp and between the ass messages are sent and those are called e bgp e bgp is exterior bgp so exterior bgp is basically um, between the ass and inside the as everybody needs to know how to get to germany anyway so that is done by i bgp okay now this is section 5.4 of the textbook right so make sure that you read that and come prepared for the questions next time